Good afternoon all, new PCBs from JLC PCB. Let's open the box and these are they. Now there are 20 PCBs in here because I need 14. Um, they're Enig, so Enig, so they have the gold plating on all the uh, pads. And also I've got some gold fingers on here, but let's get these open and take a closer look. Now, if you're thinking, Julian, you've done the gold fingers thing before, so this is nothing new. Well, you'd be right. It is nothing new um, in the sense that it's got the gold fingers. What's different about these PCBs, that's going to need another cut, isn't it? Is that they're thinner. These are on a thinner uh, FR FR4 fiberglass substrate. So these, instead of the normal 1.6 millimeters, are 1.2 millimeters. More cutting required. So here they are. Here are the PCBs. Uh, they are my vocoder speech filter board. And in fact, this is the very last vocoder board. Certainly revision one, there will be a few revision two boards. It's uh, similar to the power supply distribution board. I'll just get that one. Um, that one was this one. Now, there's a couple of things I've noticed which are different. Well, one of the things I designed to be different is that this was designed to be 3.96 millimeters between the pads. And that, I discovered, didn't quite line up with the connectors in this 805 connector. And I came to the conclusion that these are actually spaced at 5 30 seconds of an inch. So there was a slight mismatch between there and there. So this one, I redesigned it to be 5 30 seconds of an inch. So we should have a very good uh, alignment between these pads and these connectors. Uh, the other thing about this board is it's slightly bigger. It's asymmetric um, because it's designed to fit on this board. These are daughter boards that sit on here. Two per one of these boards. And there are seven of these boards in the vocoder. So that's why I need 14 of these. But yes, the thing I've done differently this time is the thickness. So let's take a look at that. So magnifying glass. And we can see there it's 1.6 millimeter thickness for the board on the left. 1.2 millimeter thickness for the one on the right. You can see that they've put the chamfers on the gold fingered edge connector thingy. So they're chamfered on both of these. Um, the chamfering doesn't come quite in as far on the 1.2 millimeter as it does on the 1.6 millimeter for, well, what should be fairly obvious reasons. Now, the reason I went for 1.2 millimeters is because on this power supply distribution board, when it fits into the 805 12 connector, 12 pin connector, it's very tight, very tight. Now, that's a good thing, I think, for... Um, a board which is essentially power distribution because we don't want that wobbling around and we don't want it particularly easy to pull out and it is very tight so what I'm hoping and I have not tried this is that this board will fit into this connector not quite so tight because I want to be able to pull this thing in and out to rearrange the filter boards because I think that would be quite fun so here's the test let's see if that fits in there oh that's totally different Yes, that's got a completely different feel. That's about right. That's really quite easy to get in and out. Now, I know people have said this gold plating is very, very thin and probably only good for about three or four insertions. But to be quite honest, on this project, it doesn't really matter if it goes down to the copper. It'll still work fine. But yeah, that's just exactly what I wanted. That's got a really nice feel in these sockets. I think it's because... The thicker board is actually rubbing up against the blue plastic because it does um, sit into this slot either side of these connections. I can probably show that close up. You may be able to see the little plastic ridges extending in. And I think the 1.6 millimeter board is pushed quite hard up against those blue plastic ridges. The 1.2 millimeter probably just fits snugly inside there so yeah it's a really good fit and i think i must have designed uh, this overhang here to be exactly the same as this overhang here because that does appear to be exactly the same length 
So that's rather pretty. One thing that I was a little bit concerned about was there's um, a RCA socket sitting there and I was a little bit concerned about getting the plug in especially with components sitting on this side of the board however I may not fit these RCAs because these ribbon cable connectors these uh, two row IDC pin headers um, is the new way of connecting the audio and power on all these boards daisy chained down to the output board so in fact I'm not going to be using these RCAs sitting on that little 8 pin pad array but yes I'm really pleased that that fits perfectly in there. Now there is something else I've noticed on here and that is, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit, on these boards I put um, a mask removal rectangle over this entire area so that the solder mask is removed and what we're seeing here is the sort of more yellowy colour um, base FR4 fiberglass behind those gold fingered edge connectors and it's the same on both sides it's a kind of almost yellowy color now oddly on this board you've kind of got it on this side but on the reverse side it's much more greeny and I'm just wondering why that is I'm just thinking I don't think it's anything I've done wrong or anything that's been done differently in the manufacturing process I think it's just a different sort of coloration of the FR4 but it is different on one side to the other if I do it reflectively it's much lighter colored that side than it is that side but definitely there's a margin between the well that's actually the um, the copper area there but there's a margin between the solder resist I think and these uh, gold plated copper pads just they just look different between these boards and the new boards but I don't think there's anything covering that gold well, I hope not now just let's just look at the alignment between the um, 4.96 millimeter spacings and the 530 seconds spacings now of course the problem here is going to be parallax isn't it but can we see that they're slightly different I think we can yes there's definitely an offset at the bottom and then of course the other thing is how well do these fingers align with the gold connectors in this socket let me see if I can get that set up you can probably see that best from the reflections on the uh, gold plated pads that they definitely align very precisely 5.30 seconds between the pads on the board and the connector being described as 4.96 millimeters well it actually isn't it's 5.30 seconds as well so the alignment there is perfect the other thing I did was on this board I cut this tongue ever so slightly narrower so on this one I've increased it slightly so there's less play that's an optical illusion there isn't it but there's less play of the board tongue within that socket on this board because I made the tongue slightly wider so this is what it's going to look like with the two speech filters sitting on uh, the board with the two excitation filters there are actually two here but these chips are shared one side of the chip is one filter the other side of the chip is the other so there's one filter two filters and then on the speech filters one filter two filters but these are nice and easy to remove so I can swap filters over which is what I wanted to do because I wanted the, the ability to mismatch the frequency of the speech filter with the speech uh, with the frequency of the excitation filter bear with me it'll be fun I assure you this board is only attached to the front panel by these two uh, full-size potentiometers so it's not going to be very sort of rigid on that on that front panel although I am thinking of an idea with um, nylon pillars which sit between these filter boards and the boards below to give them a little bit of support but the ability to pull these out with very little friction is what I really wanted so yeah 1.2 millimeter boards should we get the uh, calipers on them 
Right, here are my uh, cheapy eBay calipers. Let's try the 1.6 millimeter board. I've got to try and do it in such a place that avoids the uh, copper, because we're really only interested in the FR4. Okay, well that's reading ever so slightly low. Let me just see whether I've got that at zero. Yeah, it seems to be at zero. So these are measuring 1.5. Let's see how far I have to pull it back. I'm not actually going to pull it, I'm just going to try and Oh no, that's fallen out. Yeah, but as you can see it's on the cusp of 1.6 and 1.5 for that board. Okay, let's try this board. Let's find a similar place where there's no... Oh, well this this has a copper backplane, of course, which this one doesn't. So of course this is going to measure ever so slightly thicker, we would imagine. Close that up and that's reading 1.1. How far do I have to pull that back to... That's still reading 1.1, but... There we are, these are 1.2 millimeter nominal boards and these are 1.6 and it makes a big difference to the friction in these sockets. So that's it really, I'm afraid, uh, for Vocoder project enthusiasts, this is the last board. Now as I say, there will be uh, Rev 2s and of course I've got to do a series of videos on uh, building this thing up and actually uh, hearing the output from it, so there'll be plenty more of that. But in terms of new designs for PCBs, yeah, I'm going to have to move on to um, some other project. Hmm, cheerio.